Live from New York City, it's The Gary Knoll Show. And now, your host, Gary Knoll. Hi, everyone. I'm Gary Knoll. Today, we're going to speak with a person who is probably the leading attorney in the United States and helping to defend freedom of choice for parents who do not want to engage with mandatory vaccines. His name is Alan Phillips. Alan, I've interviewed several times, and the the reasoning is that if they're going to go after the person who is considered the best in the field, and he is probably the best exclusively practicing vaccine exemption and waiver law, and individual and legal rights on vaccination policies, then they're going after him to send a message to everyone else. So we're inviting him on to hear his story and see what we can do to protect him and also seek justice. Needless to say, this is where all of the citizen activist journalists can come in after you hear what he has to say and who's against him. We can expose those people and will. Also today, part two of Global Warming, We're Screwed, my newest uh, article along with Richard Gale on this topic, and it's different. I Today what you'll hear is a completely original, different perspective on how to deal with the environment. I have not seen, heard anyone talk about this in the past, and yet this is the This is the 1,200-pound grill in the room that no one is acknowledging. And if time permits, I'll also be addressing uh, one of the two callers about shouldn't we at least understand that it's better to have someone like Hillary Clinton as president than Donald Trump, so the lesser of two evils should get an exemption, a pass. Okay, that's one of our listeners' perspective. I'll share my points of view. We always begin with the latest on health and healing. From West Virginia University, a group of scientists were studying how to improve certain biomarkers of cellular aging and Alzheimer's disease. And they published the results in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. And it's about experiencing memory loss. And they found that you can improve memory, cognition, sleep, mood, and quality of life with these biomarkers. They looked at 60 older adults with cognitive decline, and that's a condition that may represent a preclinical stage of Alzheimer's disease, and this is a randomized clinical trial. And by the way, what is very frustrating for those experiencing cognitive decline is you don't remember what you forgot. As a result, Someone can say, I didn't say that. Yeah, you did. No, I'm, I'm certain I didn't. No, you said it every minute for the last 20 minutes. And they look at you. They think that somehow you're disconnected from reality, and it's, no, this is what happens. They can have the same conversation multiple times. They can forget that they've shared something with you or done something. It can get really bad. I'll tell you how bad. A close friend of mine a very well-known person, a very loved person. He's just, he's just very thoughtful, um, always has been. I've known him my whole professional career. We kind of started off together. Met at a Park Avenue um, party where someone was trying to reintroduce after 30 years the old Gertrude Stein salons of Paris where you'd have Hemingway and, and D.H. Lawrence, whoever you would have. Well, it wouldn't have been D.H. Lawrence at that point. But you would have had some remarkable individuals. And uh, we had, at any given party, about 15, sometimes as many as 20 people. But you'd only have one person who would cover a given area. If it was history or an adventurer who had traveled around the world and gone to some remote country and brought back interesting insights, if it was a linguistic expert. But these were formidable intellects. I was always in, 
just in awe of how deep their thinking went. And it was always hosted by wonderful, exuberant, optimistic uh, former debutante who had the good fortune to have enough resources to have an apartment that we could all have dinner in. Drugs were absolutely forbidden. If you got drunk, you were never invited again. Uh, vulgarity was not uh, acceptable. As one woman said when someone went on a rant once, I think it was Norman Mailer. Anyhow, um, she said, um, the Marx Brothers are funny. And they're funny because they are they found a way around the Hayes censorship rules by just being more clever. So if, if you want to say something that uh, offends us, say something offensive. If you want to say something that entertains us, enlightens us, say it in a way that does not offend us. I thought that always stuck in my, my mind because I started seeing some comedians go from being very clever, and I really appreciated their humor, just being vulgar. And if the only way you can get someone's attention, and that's what I see now with all these political comedians, they're not funny. Am I the only one noticing? They're just not Colbert. None of these people are funny. They try to be ironic. They try to be insightful. Well, first you have to have an intellect before you do that, and they just don't. They're Choose another career, because that ain't working. In any case, that's where we met, and this person would talk about art. And uh, I'll tell you what kind of guy he is. He heard on a radio program that while going to a slaughtering plant, a cow jumped out of a back of a van, ran across a highway, jumped through a fence, and was hiding in some trees. So they went to get him. And so he made a call. And he said, don't kill that cow. Any creature that wants to live that bad deserves a life. So they exploited it. I think they charged him $30,000 for this cow, which would have gone for about a 1000 bucks. He paid it and then gave it a life on a farm he had upstate. His whole nature was that way. Anyhow, he now has dementia. And it's extremely frustrating because he won't remember that we just had dinner. Unfortunately, um, not in a situation, and this is often the case, fully supported by family to reverse this using natural techniques, which leads me to a larger issue. I'm going to guess about 95% of the people that I counsel throughout my career have not had the support of their family members. In some cases, it has been their family member, one family member, who did support them, but the others negated it. There's a very famous French director, one of the top five French directors in cinematic history in France. His son came to me at Tri-State Healing Center, and uh, he listened to the show, and he read my work, and he said, I very much want you to help my father uh, with his cancer. So we spent about four hours going over all the protocols, and just so happened that evening there were some people with cancer who I said, why don't you go speak with them? Why don't you go speak with some of the physicians? And he did, and he was very optimistic. He said, wow. He said, I spoke with this woman. She had end-stage breast cancer and going into hospice care, and now 14 months later there's no cancer in her body. She's doing this preventatively, and who would have known? I said, well, she knows now. Now you know. I didn't hear from him for about eight weeks, going walking by Lincoln Center Plaza one night, the movie theater. There he is. And he comes over. He says, I'm, I'm so frustrated because his wife refuses to even think about alternative therapy, and yet he's terminal. I said, well, look at it like this. He knows he's terminal. Everyone in his family knows he's terminal. He's seeing his friends and family because he's terminal, may not see him again. What does anyone have to lose? There's no downside. If he's going to die, he's going to die. Why not try something where there's a reasonable chance that he could improve or reverse it? And there was that family member who said no and said no with an attitude. 
So I fully understand those of you who do not have a support system to help you when you need it the most because they're conditioned to believe that anything other than what their doctor says cannot possibly work because if something did work, their doctor would surely know about it. Hmm. We have an audio clip. There are four physicians, all board certified, one from Sloan Kettering, a professor, another one of America's top pain specialists, and their mother and father, she's a board certified radiologist, former professor, and his father is also a uh, board certified physician. Four in one family. They came to see what is possible. They left with a whole new mindset. What would happen if we actually had open civil discourse of allowing different points of view to be shared and challenged, as they should be? But we don't have that at this time. I'm writing an article on it. It'll be done in the next couple weeks, and I'll share it with you. Anyhow, the good news is, if you do something this simple, this simple, you can actually impact the beta amyloid in the brain, and you can also help by stimulating some of these markers. And this is over a three-month period. And one is the length of the telomere, telo, T-E-L-O, mer, M-E-R-E. The longer that is, and the more active the telomerase enzyme is, and telomerase serves as a protective cap on chromosomes, and telomerase is an enzyme responsible for maintaining the telomere's length. So when you do good things, like having a plant-based diet, taking your supplements, alcarnosine, resveratrol, pycnogenol, NAD, PPQ, etc., you actually keep it long. When you exercise, you really keep it long. So the more you exercise on a regular basis, the longer you exercise over your lifetime, the longer your telomeres, the more active your telomerase. Hence, what they found is these simple things improve memory, cognition, function, stress, sleep, mood, and quality of life. And this was followed up for a total of six months. So this was just in three months. Wow. So you see, there is hope. And this was in a major study, Western University, published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. But do you think this is going to filter down? No, it won't. But it's for you to know because you can actually use it. From Wake Forest Medical Center, an article published in the Journal of Neuroscience, mindfulness meditation beats a placebo in pain reduction. So just being mindful, sitting, and you don't have to get in a lotus position and close your eyes and hold your thumb and forefinger and go, oh, 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 blah, blah, blah. No, you don't. You can just take a walk in the park. You can go sit by a a stream, look out at the ocean. You can look at a group of trees. You can watch children playing. You can look at a, and just stroke your, the the neck and the head and the, the chest of your dog, cat. Simple things, but keep your mind focused on that. In other words, don't have the television on, don't be talking on the telephone. Just mindfulness. Be mindful of where your mind is. And that can help reduce pain. That's important. Also today, they found that from Tufts University, published in the Peer Review Journal of Nutritional Biochemistry, that feeding cranberries reduces the low-fiber, animal-based diet effects on gut health. Now, why is this important? Because we're not always able to change everything at the time we need to or have others change what is important for them in their diet. So how many times have you had friends or family continue to eat the wrong foods, be angry at you for eating the right foods or suggesting they change, and then they get sick? So this study, which is unique, shows that cranberries have a protective effect on your gut microbiome. Micro, M-I-C-R-O, biome, B-I-O-M-E. 
That is the